Let's see, where are we? Where are we? That's not us. There we are. Hello, hello, hello. We are live for another fun demo in Create with Sharon Hoppy Designs. Guess who I am? Sharon Hoppy. But you know that or you wouldn't be in the group, correct? So, oh, my phone is doing weird things. Let me see if I can get it to show me who's in. So, hey, Cindy. How are you tonight? Hi, Barb. Now it's showing me who's in there. Hey, Jen, how are you? Um, Barb, put in the comments how you're doing with your test project. Um, you can just say test project working, not working, or is there no change from what you showed me before? Um, welcome, 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 everybody. Hi, Kathy, Cindy, Jean, Melissa. Hey, hello, you all. So those of you, we have uh, several Slab to Fabbers, my private group, uh, my membership group. Y'all be sure and uh, come on into that group after this. I'm going to do a unscheduled pop-up live. And we're just going to play in the clay, um, show you some fun things with more jewelry. More jewelry. So, hey Deb, hey Nancy. Allison, hello. So while we're waiting for everybody to get on, I am um, I am thinking about adding a page on my website um, different from what I've typically done. Hey, Chandra. And uh, hey, Sonia. And it's going to be possibly called sarcasm um, and it dried too much outside but have another in the works oh perfect 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 um so I guess we made a bad decision on that one sorry uh, I did tell you to do that so uh, I apologize so let's see who else is on here Susan Debbie Miller, Bettina, uh, Sonia, we've got quite a few of you on. So, as I was saying, I'm contemplating adding a page called Sarcasm. For those of you who don't like sarcasm, bad words, um, those type of things, I thought I would put stuff like that on a completely separate page. So that if that's not your thing, you don't even have to go to that page. So I wouldn't, let's say, um, as an example, uh, I, have, I created a stamp and this is going to be a bad word. So if you don't like bad words, um, it is a three inch stamp, this size, and it says... And it looks like this when it's done. And it says, let's keep the dumb blah, blah, blah to a minimum today. Well, it has bad words. So I've had a lot of requests for stuff like that. But I've hesitated because there's a lot of people that don't want to see that. So my thought is, if I put it on its own little private page and call it what it is, those that don't enjoy that kind of thing, don't even need to click on that page. Those that do like sarcasm and smarty pants stuff, um, then jump right on that page and it'll be a plethora of stamps, maybe a pen, whatever, but it would be more the smarty pants, sarcasms, maybe some little bad words, um, and that kind of thing. So let me know in the comments what you think of that. Um, yay for sarcasm, no for sarcasm. Again, I would put it on a totally separate page on my website. 
So again, I don't offend anybody because it's not going to be sprinkled in everywhere. Um, but I thought about that because this was the cutest darn stamp. And I could come up with a few people in my family that it would love or they it would fit. Um, so it was an idea. So let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, if I don't get too slammed for it, I, I'll go ahead and incorporate that. So let's see. What do we got going here? Also, huh? What? Hey, Misty. Mr. Wilson, what were you yelling? Oh, okay. Okay, so um, I also hope everybody saw the post today on the new little gadget, the Plucker Doodad. Um, though after I'd already named it, I saw some other really fun names. So the name might change, but, but the tool won't change. So, um, who saw the Plucker Doodad video and who thinks that that will be a huge help? Oh, here it is. A huge help in getting those single forms and dual drapes out. Because I don't know about you, I created that bowling pin look handle for the deeper ones because I couldn't get in and then get in the next one and then get in the next one without messing the whole thing up or dropping one and wrecking my project. So we came up with this. Hey, Jane. We came up with this, and it is slick. It works perfect, and it's great. So they have been added to the website. Um, and so if, if you only need one, you don't need one for every single dual draper form you have. That would be a total, total, total waste of money. I might suggest two only because if your studio is like mine, things do tend to grow legs, run away. I can't, you can't hear me. If you can't, is can everybody else hear me? Where's my sound? My sound looks on. Let me know in the comments if you can hear me before I keep blabbing. You can hear me? Okay. So, Jean, it must be you. But if you can't hear me, you can't tell what I'm saying. Will you type to Jean Ward to log out and log back in? Because she obviously can't hear me. Okay. So, anyway, but I would suggest too, because if your things grow legs like mine do, then you have a spare and eventually it will grow legs and come back to you and you will end up with two again. So, um, hey, Catherine. Hey, Barbara. So, um, anyway, so that's that. So today I just have a, a fun little, um, I need more than one. I keep losing the pins. Yeah, I do too, Barb. Um, you can, you can also get extra pens off the website if you need some extras. Um, I lose mine all the time. I try to keep two here on my work table and I'm forever going, where did they go? Where did they go? They like roll off. In fact, I'm looking right now and yeah, mine, oh, mine's in my board. Mine's in my board, um, but I had two. I don't know where the other one went. So anyway, um, again, so tonight, come out and come back, please. Oh, okay. Go out and come back, please. Yep, I read that wrong. Yes, good, good. Thank you, Misty. Okay, so let me show you um, the fun little thing we're going to make tonight. We're going to make a, a fun new little template and form it's going to be a specialty set we're not doing it in all sizes there's going to be like three sizes um for like you could either do a three-piece set or one it'll come with the dual drape and the template and um tonight we're just going to make it no decoration but i have multiple um 
things coming for decorating um, for you, my Slab to Fab Society. I have several um, projects using this. Um, doesn't mean you have to get it because the projects that I show you, you could do with anything, any forms, any whatever. I just happen to be going to use this. Um, but I, I chose again not to decorate it tonight because I will be decorating it this week. Um, and I may decorate it with a video and then stick the video out so that you can see the, the way I decorated it. And then anybody that does get it, I would absolutely love to see your ideas of decoration. Um, because I have, I have several and I could always go for several more. So here we go on the first video. First off, let me make sure I don't have any questions. Nope, I don't see any. Who said that? It's nice that you're concerned, Chandra. Yes, in this world, you have to be concerned about that because um, the hate mail gets horrible. And I don't like hate mail. So, let's go on to our typical how we prep our clay. Here we go. All right, I have my little slab of B-Mix. I'm just going to use B-Mix tonight for this. And as always, I will compress. You know, if you've been here a while and you've seen this a hundred times, now would be the perfect time to go grab your bag of popcorn because you've seen this. But those of you that are new, um new to clay, this is an every slab occurrence. You're going to want to compress this. And it's something to learn to enjoy because you do it on every slab. And not only do you do it on one side, but you flip your slab very gently and you do the other side as well. I have some colored slip on my board, but look at that, it went right away. Not to worry, right? Okay, so as I said, this is B-Mix, and this starfish has lots of curves and corners in it. So I've made this one, it's, it's still very, look at this, very soft, very floppy because I want to be able to go around my form and it's a little under an eighth of an inch, but that's okay because this isn't very big. Look at this starfish. So I'm going to put it, um, oh, let's see. I always get this turned around. I want it the black side showing. Oh, because I want it to go this way. Uh, not that way. Where is my little starfish? There he is. So you have to turn it around so it fits. Um, this is one of those forms that you might want to actually mark. Oh, I did. T for top. And on my form, look at that, there is a T for top. So if I'd have just looked at it, I'd have had it lined up perfect first time. Now, I am going to be putting my clay onto the black side um, because I cut these the same. And that's okay because this is so small of a space. It's not a big, wide rim. So... It's when your clay sits, it's going to go ahead and pop off of there rather easy. When you have a big wide rim, that's when it doesn't pop off as quickly, but it will pop off. So I'm going to get my banding wheel, my banding wheel system up here, and then 
we are going to make this fun and funky little starfish. Okay. How many of you love under the sea? I have, I have this seashell and now we have the fun and funky starfish and you just wait. I may the next several sessions here in create continue with this same starfish with different ways of using it um, because it's so cool. So, um, Jean, you said you've mentioned B-Mix regularly. What exactly is B-Mix? So B-Mix is a type of clay. It's a mid-range clay, um, and it's the name of the clay that I use most often. Um, and I use, it's, let's call it a brand name. It's Laguna and it's their B-Mix type. And I most often use with no grog. Now I have been using Coleman's porcelain um, and Dave's porcelain lately, but B-Mix is Laguna's brand of mid-range that I have been using. So um, hopefully that explains that. I don't know what clay you use, Jean, but maybe put that in the comments so we know what you're using. Um, so yeah, the starfish, I, and you're going to see here in the video at the very end, we may do a little this or that game. So let's go to setting this up really quickly. I did get everybody's. Hi everyone. Better late than never. Yes, Lisa, because it's like tomorrow where you are, right? I'm always so amazed at you guys that are on a different day or in the middle of the night that show up and I love it. But if you can't make it and I see several people saying, hey, I'm late. You know what? You're never late. The replays are always here um, for you anytime your life allows. We're here. So let's go to setting up the banding wheel. So you use clay approved by your community. Okay. Um, so you don't know what that particular clay may be called. Maybe it's just their own mix and that could very well be. Okay, on to the next video. Okay, have my banding wheel, part of my banding wheel system. And it's got the little peg. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, form, my template on there. And I'm going to put my form on there. Look at that. Press that down. And I am now ready for clay. Look at that. That is so cute. Okay. I have my slab. I like to put it as you can see, over to the back side so that I can see that I'm actually going to cover the whole thing and drop that down. You can drop that a little bit on there so that you can see your shape. And then I am going to take several ribs. One is well, all of them are dirty, so I'm gonna clean them off. My little red rib, my little bigger red rib, and my yellow rib. These are the ones that I use most of the time for almost everything. All right, so first, I'm gonna take this little bitty red rib because this had a lot of tiny spots. So I'm gonna come in and, and kinda do my normal swoop here, taking my time because these are big indents, right? Now, because these are rounded on the top, you don't really have to worry about them poking through, but I'm gonna do the swoop. Do the swoop, swoop. Do the swoop. Now, I'm going to go back the other direction and swoop this way. Uh, 
because I want to get the swoop here too. And if you put a little mark in it, that's okay. Now I want to be sure and get the legs, so I'm going to swoop that down and come around on those feet. Oh, dropped it, slipped a petal, got clay under my nail. That's okay. See that mess? It's going to go away. I'm going to clean my rib and I'm going to come around and boom, it's gone. So no panic. So I'm going to swoop this and I'm going to come around this leg and swoop. All of this so far has been done with this little tiny red rib so that we could get in these areas. Now, these are not your traditional square circles, rectangles. These are fun, fun little shapes that, that can really um, give you some great projects, but they also take a little more finessing. But your standout projects make it so worth it. So I'm going to take my sponge and it's, I've wrung it out till it's barely, barely damp. I don't know why that is saying natural light, but now I'm going to come around and I'm gonna get all the little clay crumbs off of here. And I'm not pushing hard, this is just flopping. I'm not pushing hard in there at all. I'm just kind of wiping these clay crumbs down and bringing it in. Now I can see my template around there, but it's real gentle. really really gentle so put in the comments what are you envisioning as far as decorating this cute little adorable starfish okay you also want to make sure the top is flat so now i take my yellow rib and i'm going to come around each leg and Kind of swoop in. I had a little line on the other one. Whoops. And again, the little clay crumbs, don't worry about those. We're going to go and wipe them off and see where I kind of went in with my rib. That's going to wipe right off. Now, if I had texture on the inside of this, I would be just a little more gentle, but I don't. So I'm good. Okay, now, one last thing I wanna do on here, and remember, the little extra work is worth it when you see this. I wanna take my little red rib, and I just lightly dipped it in the water so it's gonna slide. Again, these, these dual drapes are rounded over the top, so I'm just gonna take my red rib and come around each leg and round that over. Wipe that off and I can come back and get those crumbs. And look at that. So I've rounded that over and really set my shape out there. Ring my sponge out really well and one last time come down and get these little clay crumbs, clay crumbs, clay boogers, whatever you want to call them. We don't want them. And again, they wipe right off. There, look at that. I see something right there. Okay, and that's that. Next up, we're gonna cut this little shining star out. So what I'm gonna use is my needle tool, which I wanna clean the end off of it so it's not so prickly with old clay. I am cleaning my sponge. 
have it sitting here, my hands on it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a hold of my clay and I'm gonna come in till I hit my template. And then I'm simply going to come around and follow the template. And I'm going fairly slow, but this will, this will follow these quarter inch thick templates. And there we have it. So what I'm gonna do, I didn't come all the way out, but I will. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel this back and just set this clay right here for the moment. Now, what I like to do, let me see if I can show you this. See on the side, you can see some of that clay stuff that you maybe didn't get all the way around. I can sit and I can look at this now and actually grab those little pieces off. And I like to do that because um, it's a whole lot less sponging if you do this up front, if it's needed. A lot of times it's not needed at all, but you can go around and look and see if it's needed because, you know, that was a lot of clay in a blind, um, blind template. So, if you take a little time, none's needed there, not, right around this corner, there's a little, see it's just this, but it's faster, much faster, and gives you a whole, a lot nicer look than just the sponge smearing it in. It keeps your edges and corners more crisp, and that's it. So, I definitely uh, want to wipe this down. And I want to just kind of come in that little corner and make sure that I've taken care of it so it's rounded so I don't get cracking. If this looked like it could be a very complicated form, but it's actually very easy. Whoops. Unless you stick your finger in it like I just did. Okay. And that's it. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set it aside and let it set. And when it's... <laughs> I just wiped clay crumbs all in it. So... I will take my rib. It'll be faster. I just take my rib and lightly take those in. There we go. Very easy fix. Aren't y'all glad I stick my fingers in it all the time or ribs or something? Because the more times I do that, the more times I show you how to fix a boo-boo. Because let me tell you, there is... <clears throat> Nobody that works in clay that doesn't have fails, that doesn't do boo-boos. <coughs> but learning to fix a lot of the boo-boos takes what you would have just thrown into the scrap pile and actually come out with a gorgeous piece. So don't be quick to throw it in the scrap pile. Um, even if you think, oh my gosh, I ruined that. There's nothing I could do. Don't. And it might be scrap. Don't throw it in the scrap pile. What you should do is mess with it and do everything you can think of to fix it and see how far you can take it before you can't do any more with it. You may surprise yourself and uh, turn it into a gorgeous piece. If not, the lesson is invaluable because you're learning more and more what you can and can't do with your clay and how far you can take it. So don't be quick to say, oh, I messed it up. 
take it and run with it and see what happens. But there you have it. We're gonna go put this out and let it dry and then we'll come back and flip it over. Okay, there you have that part. Um, let's see, did I miss anything else? Who all, why did my, I can't for some reason see y'all's comments on my phone. Oh, there they are. Okay, so we have, let's see. Carla's jumped on, Stacy's jumped on, Sherry McCullough's jumped on, Carolyn. Well, hello to all of you. Somebody else just put a hi there. Oh, Katie. Hi, Katie. Um, so, like I was saying in the video, you have seen me numerous times gouge my clay, stick my fingers in my clay. Oh my gosh, last week. Last week, the bird dishes. Did I do that in the slab to fab group? But I have my iPad right here above me and I was messing with it and it fell out of its thing and landed right on the big foot of my big bird plate and put a big old huge dent in it. And I'm like, ah, oh, there it goes. And I got to looking at it and it didn't break anything because the clay was still soft. It just put a, I mean, a big gap. You know what? Hold on. I have it right here. Okay. Sorry. This was worth doing though. Did I do this? I don't remember which group I did this in now, but... My bird plate. So I dropped <laughs> my iPad. Which one did it actually hit? I think it was this one. This one. And put this big gouge in. So what did I do? I gouged it two more times. <laughs> I took my knife and gouged it. And made the, I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, the leaf. I have a leaf in there. You'll see it when it's glazed. But so I gouged it to make it match and look like it was supposed to be there. So when you think you boo-boo or when you do boo-boo, sit back and look at it and think of what you can do. I know um, one of our members, Rachel Van Sloten, she has posted numerous, numerous, numerous times um, things that she would be throwing on the wheel or hand building that she envisioned one thing and it started out as one thing and she wrecked it as she says and she didn't throw it away. She just kept going and made something totally different out of it. So see how far you can take it. It's the best learning device you can have. Um, let's see, Katie, I remember you dropped it and that you were going to make the same look to match it. And I did was, so that was in the slab, the fab group. So these, this set of nesting sets, I don't know if you guys have seen this then with the, what am I doing? Oh, that's not on with the birds. Um, Carla posted a gorgeous little heart plate with these birds in them today. I can't wait to see it glaze. There's a, the birds. The birds, the birds. I should have thought about it and put the birds and the bees, but I didn't. All right. Hey, Nicolene. All right. So let's go on. Let me move this over and let's go on to while we've been sitting here talking we'll pretend i finished making that starfish i stuck it outside in this texas heat for about 10 or 15 minutes just to let it set up enough on the outside so that i could flip it so pretending 
while that, um, while we were talking, it was out there. Now we're bringing it back in and we are going to flip this. Well, let's flip this gorgeous little starfish and see what we come up with. Again, I'm just using a template that will fit. I'm gonna flip this over, pull out my wheel or my banding wheel system with the peg and pull off that template. Oh, and look at that. Oh, that's adorable. <clears throat> kind of clean this up a bit. And, oh, get my handy dandy fucker doodad. Unscrew it. Put it in there. Screw that in. Till it's, I mean, you're not going to get it super tight, but you're going to feel the difference. Oh, that one popped right out. Look at that. And now I can go around and clean this up. And boy, do I have some design ideas, but you're going to have to wait till next time to see those. And there is the whimsical starfish. There we go. Fix that little spot. Oh, look at that baby. Well, that make some summer fun on your, well, I would say picnic table, but here in Texas, you can't go outside. Or you could go outside with your raw food and it would cook it for you. Um, uh, you know, yes, Patrick Starfish from SpongeBob, but I will tell you, um, I well, let me show you this next video and then I will explain something to you. No, it was about a quarter inch thick, Jean. Um, it was about a quarter inch thick. You may be thinking when I was doing the jewelry pieces, look how thin that is. This is um, off my anatomy, anatomy, that, that pin that starts with an A, the flower, where I cut around this flower and made it a pendant. Look at that. Look how gorgeous. But these I've made an eighth inch thick because you don't want this big, gaudy, thick flower hanging off of you. But the plate was, or that dish was um, not just an eighth inch. It was more of a quarter. It might have squeezed down a little when I was working with it. But let me also show you this video. Well, let's flip this baby and see what we can come up with on here. Okay, I'm gonna just use a template here, big enough to cover. I'm gonna flip this over, bring this down and pull this out set it beside me. This is dried enough. That should pop right off. Notice I did have it against the back side or the black side, but since it is so small of a rim, it's not going to hurt on the black side. It'll come right off. Now I am going to, because I had it on the black side, you see these little black marks are, are just from the, the template on my laser, which is fine. That'll That'll wipe right off and uh, it'll only do it a couple times if we forget to wipe it before we send them. But this one's mine. So I also want to make sure I'm, I'm nice and rounded in these corners so I don't get cracking. I was a little thin on this corner. 
So I do want to make sure it's nice and good. And then just come around. Now, this particular form isn't real hard to get to, to pull out, but let's use the plucker doodad, our new plucker, whoa, doodad. I'm just going to stick it right in there. I'm leaving the rubber on the screw, and I'm going to stick it right in there, and I'm going to screw that down. And when I screw that down, that expands that rubber. Whoops, hold on. Let me grab the other one. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. That was one of the original testers that was smaller. So I'm going to take the little rubber doodad and I'm going to push it into the hole. Now I'm going to take my little screw and screw it in there nice and tight. And again, that's going to expand that rubber doodad the doodad and then I'm going to hold my clay and look at this it's going to pop that right out see how easy no dropping I still wouldn't just do it over my form but no dropping no nothing so that is the little clucker doodad it plucks that forms right out of there then what I do is just unscrew that and pull the, the little rubber doodad right out. For safekeeping, I'm gonna screw that right back in and have it over here. You only need one of these because they work on all the single forms and dual drapes. However, if you get two, you have one when your studio eats one. And if your studio is like mine, that happens. All right, so let me fix this one little spot that I got a little tight. I do want to make sure that's good. And there's that uh, starfish. That can be so awesomely decorated. And then I'm going to show you flip in the second one because I have two designs of this that uh, I was testing. Now this one will make a great dish. Oops, stuck my finger in that. I just wanna really curve this in and minimize that. Okay, so here's this whimsical little starfish. Now I'm gonna go grab the other one and flip it so you can see these side by side and do a comparison. Okay, here is my other little whimsical starfish form. And I am going to... Which starfish? Let me move my face out of the way. Do you like this one or this one? Starfish, starfish, starfish. Starfish. This would be my left. Might be your right, but we're going to call this one left. This is the more whimsy starfish, and this is the more traditional, let's call it starfish. So, do you like whimsy? Do you like traditional? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so let me know because I was playing with both of these. Um, I kind of figured it would be left, left, left. And I see, um, Barb, you're like, did we see this already? We did, but it was a different shape. The one on the left is more realistic. And funny enough, I actually was playing and testing three different shapes of starfish. And the one that I didn't bother to show tonight because I thought looked too SpongeBobby, too SpongeBobby. Okay, <laughs> too much like SpongeBob. I didn't do that one, but I had this one as well, which this one is big and wide and got a lot of decorating service surface. So if you really wanted the SpongeBob look, but I don't want to put 
three starfish forms up on my website because I think that's like overkill. So starfish number one, whimsy. Starfish number two, classy. Starfish number three, Spongebobby. Whatever gets the most votes is going up. Um, somebody said, who said that? Sherry said just a star. This could be just a star. And I could go with that in addition to the whimsy because I have a good feeling. And I will tell you that the one on the left, the whimsy starfish is already on my website because I figured that was going to be the number one starfish. Um, Spongebobby, which I'm assuming is this one, may end up there as well. And, but, um, only because it's, yes, the Spongebob and just the star. Is this the one you're referring to, Carolyn, as just the star? I'm assuming that it is. Um, I will, oh, I'm getting multiple. Just the star is a good staple form. Whimsy and Star. I can see both the left and the Patrick. <laughs> That's a good name, the Patrick. Um, can I get a copyright in trouble for calling it the Patrick? I don't know. But I will... Um, Whimsy and Bobby, because Bobby can also be used for Christmas. Oh, we call him Christmas Bob. <laughs> or Bobby Christmas. Okay, I will um, throw out... The number two, because that one took a dive and it's okay with me. I will make this one and uh, post a picture in the group, um, in all my groups, because usually my Slab to Fab group, my, my membership group is the one I always do that if I have multiples, I usually go there first and say, okay guys, which one do you like best? And they go with them. Um, and that's what I go with. So, so they're usually my deciding voters. Um, you guys got to vote tonight. But I will make Bobby, Patrick, Patrick Bobby. Hey, wait, what's that race car movie? Billy Bobby. Mr. Wilson, Bobby Bobby. What's that guy's, that race car dude movie? Billy Bobby, Bobby Bobby. Dale. Uh, Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Oh, well. Patricky Bobby. How about that? Patricky Bobby. Anyway, I'll make one of those and put it up here and let you guys decide is it worthy of also going on the website? Whimsy is definitely already there. It's under specialty sets because with it, because it can't be multi-purpose with any other rims. So it will come rim template and form and it'll come in three sizes. So you could do a cluster or simply one size, whatever um, may fit your kiln. So any other questions because uh, the bob trick. <laughs> oh, that's cute too. The bob trick. So the... Um, Plucker Doodad is on the website under accessories and tools. And uh, they're priced for a single, a discount for two, and an, uh, another discount if you need three. Um, I figured if you if you got two or three, we should take a little off. Um, so those are under accessories and tools. Take notice that we had, let's see, is she on? I've had, I had several requests for, um, love the plucker doodad. <laughs> it was definitely needed, wasn't it? You know, I thought ahead on the bowling ball thing, but I didn't think about those singles. And I'll tell you, every time I use them, especially for the dual drapes, that's what I really should have demoed tonight was, like one of the minimalist look plates because that's where this plucker doodad is really going to be helpful 
to get those single. They're for the single forms or single dual drapes, not the not the doubles, triples, because obviously those have finger holds. But that's what this is for. And it's going to be a game changer for those of you who can't get those dual drapes out or even the forms out and you don't want to keep digging in and fixing. So that's what that's for. Um, very quickly, because we're about out of time. Um, I have had several requests for this, um, this shape in a form, this wavy oval to create a form that would match. So we did that. It's on the website. And then, um, well, I don't know where they went. Hold on. This squiggle square shape, this outer shape, and I used a um, squircle on the inside. I had multiple requests too for this shape to be a form also. So we did that, and that's also on the website. So uh, there's several new things out there if you're interested, but if you use a lot of minimalist drapes and or single forms, the plucker, um, the plucker. Anyway, that's all I have. And I le left the doodad name because when I was explaining it, I kept calling this little rubber thing a doodad because I didn't know what it was. So it was a doodad. So it kept the doodad name. Any other, any other questions? Anything else? I think um, next visit, I will have the whimsy and even maybe the Patrick Bobby or the, <laughs> the Bobby Star or whatever we end up calling that. Um, I may have some really cool decorating for that. So thank you again for your help and creativity. You're very welcome. Very, very welcome. And I will see you all. Did you guys see my colored clay earrings from that colored clay workshop? I don't know if I've shown you these. But my slab of fabbers that are here right now, jump on over into the slab of fab group because in 15 minutes, I'm going to be over there and we are going to be playing in the clay with some more jewelry ideas. So those of you who want to know what we do in that group, if you hit my website, there is all about the Slab to Fab Society and um, you are more than welcome and we'd love to have you in that group as well. See you guys in Slab to Fab and those, the rest of you, I will see back here in not sure what day, but I will let you know. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming and playing in the clay with me.